did Doug French present our first ever, in our first ever community keynote, now known as Voices of the Year. He was the first man to grace our stage. That's right, before Guy Kawasaki, before President Obama, there was Doug. We know him for other things as well. He has contributed to a number of anthologies. I will name those. Uh, things I Learned About My Dad, edited by Heather Armstrong. Sleep is for the Week by Rita Ahrens. And Curtsy Takes a Bow, edited by Laura Mays. He is the creator of Laid Off Dad. That's how we got to know him. And he is the co-founder of the Dad 2.0 conference, which will be in San Francisco this coming year. We got some support there. So without any further ado, Doug is here to present his 10 by 10. Hi. Um, how's my voice? I have a, the voice could, uh, it rarely even needs a mic, so if I'm waking you up in the back, I apologize. Um, it's great to be here. Uh, I am Doug French. I am the co-founder of the Dad 2.0 Summit. I am a proud veteran of seven bloggers. And I am a man. Uh, and I, uh, when I thought about how I wanted to distill seven bloggers into uh, 10 minutes or whatever, um, it occurred to me I couldn't figure out how to title it, so I titled it that. Um, for reasons you'll see. But um, I'm in a really weird position now. This is going to sound as strange in your ears as it does coming out of my mouth. But I am a white, straight, Anglo-Saxon, 11th generation male, and I'm here to talk about minorities. I know and basically how much my minority status here at this event has benefited me over the years, and how the perspective of being a minority has been crucial to all I've been able to try to do as a blogger and as a father and as a man. And um, this has a special a connotation for me because I, wanna, I wanted to put it like that instead, because my little Y is in a very cloistered, comfortable bunch of X's. And I've always felt very comfortable here as a part of your community in a way that I can't, hopefully I can express, and the gratitude that I can express. So, that's me in 2008. That's me as the first male to speak at Blogger which I think is, was a really big deal. I'm glad they didn't tell me until after I was done, but that was a big deal for me. Look how happy I look. I was so happy the whole time for reasons you're about to find out. And I mean, it's not Sandra Day O'Connor, but I'll take it. So this book is a very important thing, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, so the three events that I can distill this down to, uh, number one was, um, I, a little background, I began a blog in 2003. Uh, I was laid off from a job, I was a dad. I called my blog Laid Off Dad. Boom, there's a brand in 30 seconds, done. And uh, I was blogging and interacting with all these women, mostly women, other people were doing this interacting with them on, as email, again, before the days of Instagram and Skype and uh, pasteurized milk, it seems. And then 2005 came along, and I saw that all these women that I had come to admire as writers and as people were all getting together at this thing called Blogger in San Jose. And like many of you, I'm not sure if you had the same experience, but many of you were like, all right, I missed it this year, I'm going next year. And that's what I made a plan to do. And so in 2006, I came back. And it was everything I'd hoped it would be. Because that's when I first met Heather Armstrong and Alice Bradley and Eden Kennedy and 
myriad other women who, I, who are friends of mine now, nine years later. Um, the thing about that first weekend, though, was the first night when I was at Blogger, I found myself in a hotel room, me and all women, between like 15 and like a million women, and the subject gravitated toward hand cream. And then it gravitated towards alternate uses for that hand cream. Gratifying uses for hand cream. And I thought to myself, there's a couple of ways I could interpret this. One, I'm just part of the crowd. We're talking about stuff that people talk about. It's a thing people do, and I'm a guy, so what? Um, or I could have been being hazed. <laughs> if I was being hazed, though, I was so blissfully dense and so happy just to be there and to find a bunch of people who loved writing and loved parenthood as much as I did, I was blissfully unaware. That was an important night, the night when I met lots of great people that I still value as friends. And as blissfully dense as I was in 2006, that's when life got real for me, because in 2007 I went through a divorce. And I didn't blog very much, I kind of hibernated, I missed blog her in 07 because I didn't know who I was online anymore. And as a result, I missed out on a lot and I had to figure out who I was going to be again and if I was gonna, ever gonna get that spark that I had. So then 2008 comes along and I have to get back into Blogger. I have to get back to my people, but I'm getting divorced and I've also written an essay to my kids in this book, in Heather Armstrong's anthology, Things I Learned About My Dad. And I was so proud of it, it was a personal thing for me and so that was the essay that made me put my name on it, that made me throw off my anonymity. I've been blogging five years as just laid off dad. But it was that essay edited by the woman I met at this conference who said, get in the arena. Show off your own name, be your own self, and lean into this. I mean, I, I gotta say, leaning in, it's, it's an important thing for guys too. Because I had to go to my job and tell, people, tell them I was a blogger. And they didn't like it and I didn't work there a year later. So my worlds collided about that, being, no longer being anonymous, and I'm not sure, I'm worried sick, I'm scared to death basically how my divorce is gonna turn out, but I come here to be a part of that community keynote in 2008. And that was the soft landing place that I needed. Because these are my people, this, this is, that's when I realized that this was not just a bunch of people to hang around in a hotel room and talk about hand cream. This was about building relationships and building a support system and finding your tribe online. And they saw me through so much of that. Not least because the woman who went before me in that community keynote was Casey Mullins. And she wrote about how when she was seven and a half months pregnant, she tried to kill herself with pain meds because her, her depression and her pregnancy was, had such a horrible effect on her mind and she wanted to kill both herself and her unborn child. And I was coming on after that. And it was a revelatory thing to talk about how when she came out for her curtain call, and I came out from my dippy little story about my five-year-old. There was real power here. Power that men don't have much contact with and don't recognize. So 2008 was huge. And then, um, of course, I was the first speaker at BlogHer. So the, the uh, Pandora's box was open. And men started speaking at BlogHer, which was great. And then, um, that happened. <laughs> the backlash. Now, I don't wanna read too big a deal into this. 
Um, it's, a, it's a written by, uh, by Britt, my friend. I met her at Blog Her. We actually spoke at a conference to get at Blog Her together the following year about relationships. At the same time, though, it's a, it's a headline that's meant to get your attention, and it's something that waspy straight men don't normally see. The whole idea that it doesn't matter who you are, just the fact that you're a man makes us uncomfortable. And that was something, that's a perspective that every person needs to understand in order to empathize with those who feel it a hell of a lot more often than we do. So that was an important point for me. And the best thing was also there was, um, as part of that conference, a part of that, um, she mentioned there was another conference happening which, uh, for men that was just being started. And it was, in fact, a new men's conference that was going to start that year, and it did not involve women at all. It was a men's online media fatherhood conference, and it, didn't, it ignored women, didn't, um, very few attended, none of them spoke. And um, now their URL looks like this. So if you are a mature Japanese woman looking to get to for a date, now you can go to that site. But that's what taught me the power of inclusive majority, which is what blog her is and what that was not. Because now we try to do something different at Dad 2.0 because we have the same template that blog her has. Blog her was created as a majority, as a way to dispel stereotypes, as a way to find a specific concentrated voice for women. And we are doing the same thing for dads. And because of that, we got to be in the New York Times. Which I'm, and I'm putting that up there just because none of that would have happened without the knowledge that we all learned coming here and recognizing that inclusive majorities win. There's plenty of exclusive majorities out there. Majorities are what we gravitate toward. We're being bombarded with information, and when that information comes, we tend to turn inward. We tend to look into the echo chamber and yammer at each other and nod our heads vigorously and not look at the other. And they scare the hell out of me. But inclusive majorities are all we have. Inclusive majorities are the way we're going to combat that and recognize there's power in resolution and discussion and empathy. And that's what I feel when I come here. And that's what helps me think about that logo every time I come here. And it helps me write my, this blog I write with my ex-wife. We, uh, we're trying to figure out how to be better co-parents than we were spouses. And the empathy is there has been very powerful. It's been very helpful for me. So um, I'm very thankful for that, for the fact that I'm included here to be able to open for Tignataro, seriously? And to recognize that inclusive majorities are gonna win. They're the reason that I keep striving to try and make Dad 2.0 as great as it can be. That's why I love coming here to learn more about perspective. And that's why I always look at the lotion aisle very differently whenever I go to the drugstore. <laughs> Thank you very much.